good day and welcome back so today we're going to talk about installing angular full stack generator and then we're going to create a application after we install the generator which makes sense and we're going to run our application see what we get out of the box um, just by creating um, the application with a generator without having to have any routes or anything um, we'll see just how much it give us what it looks like and then um, we're going. That's going to be enough for this video. And in the next video, we're going to start looking at the different parts of the application, trying to understand how they built it. But before that, we have to install Angular Full Stack Generator. And so let's do that now. Good. So I'm sitting here in my command prompt and um, in the directory for you know the Full Stack Generator. That's what we're going to be talking about. And as you can see, um, we just have the one directory from the previous section. Ignore my scratch directory. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to create a data directory uh, for store our MongoDB data because the last directory we we're using was inside of our Chapter 8 directory when we were talking about MongoDB. We'll create one here in Chapter 9. And I'm, of course, I'm going to create a directory for, our, uh, for this section. So chapter 09, um, chapter 09, section 02. And then I'm going to make sure that um, I install Angular Full Stack Generator because that's what we're going to be talking about. So let's go see. So last time we left off playing around with the Angular Generator from Yeoman, all right? And we kind of did that as a refresher for playing with not only Yeoman, but some other things that a generator would give you and why you might want to use it. But I'm going to close this because that's not the one we're going to use for our application. Instead, we're going to use generator ng full stack. Now, why ng full stack? Well, with the previous generator, this guy, um, it only generated our front end application. And we kind of did that and played wrong a little bit. But it doesn't generate our back end. And if you remember, our application comprises of two things it's the front end, the client part that we write in Angular, and the back end we write in Express. And our front end communicates with our back end, making RESTful calls. So, this full stack. Is quite literally that. You, you, when you develop an application, you set full stack because if you look at the application like a layer cake, you have, you know, and top to bottom, uh, top front end is going to be the top of the cake. And then, you know, you have your back end or middleware, and then you keep going down, 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 all the way to your back end, uh, which might be like, you know, the database or something like that. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we're going to use this generator. There are a number of other full stack generators. Um, there's one called Mean, M-E-A-N, and that is for Mongo, um, Express, Angular, and Node. And essentially, this generator is actually, you could think of it a main generator, because as you could see here, it uses Node, um, Angular 1 and 2, Express, and Node. All the other stuff, Babel, Gulp, and all these other things are just, um, you know, the task runners and different type of JavaScript um, extension languages, I don't know if that's the correct thing they call them, but JavaScript type languages or languages that compile to JavaScript. And then of course, Go as a backend language in addition to Node. But we'll see a little bit about that just now, not Go per se. Anyway, um, if we scroll down, it tells you a little bit about what um, this generator offers. And you could see for a client, you could either generate a Angular 1 front end or Angular 2 we're going to stick with Angular 1 for now because that's what we've been learning. For your back end, it's going to be, you know, Node, Express, Mongoose, which we played with, um, talking to MongoDB. Uh, we're going to ignore that. And, um, yep, we're going to just do JavaScript. So we're not going to use any of these fancy languages like TypeScript or BabelScript for now. And it tells you a little bit more how it uses those things and what features they provide. But let's just go straight into installing it. And so I'm going to copy that over here and I'm going to let that run. Then it tells you how to run it, of course, and we know this from before that if the generator is to call generator dash, whatever comes afterward is the name you use. I'm going to scroll along a little bit further. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's anything else here. It says that uh, once you answer that, you run the generator, you answer some on-screen questions, then it will generate a, generate a project structure for you and the start of default stop application is the to-do application. And for full guidance, go here. So let's go see what that's about. Okay, so this finished and it did not complain. So same thing, install the generator. 
um, install yo if you don't have yo um, there's some of the questions it would ask I'll tell you that so this generator needs MongoDB um, well your application this generator generates an application in the back end to run on MongoDB which we saw from before so we'll need to have MongoDB running and this is how you run it to run both front end and back end or you can run them separately to watch the directory and you know then run the server and this is the basic structure of our application which we'll go over in future videos um, I want to get here so make sure that you have some of these dependencies so I'll you know click here paste that uh, and run that too now while that's doing that let me do this let me open up another term um, tab on my terminal here and if you remember I created a data directory in my chapter directory so I'm gonna run Mongo I'll make my prompt a little bit shorter and so I'm gonna write Mongo go D for the Damien that DB path and I'll make it you know current directory that data so go back up one directory to the data directory so I'm gonna run it there and so it's gonna run initialize that directory I'm gonna open a another screen here and uh, that is weird. and then I'm gonna connect to MongoDB so notice I just end, ran that and it says that oh, there's one connection and so that's my con connection there and it tells me I'm connected to the test um, database but if I want to see all the databases here I could say show DBs and that tells me that oh, there's only one database called local and um, okay that's cool all right um, so even though I'm connected to the test database I haven't done anything um, so let's leave that running and now we'll go back here and we'll let's do this let's create a directory CD let's call it demo app well we could really just create it in this directory but that's fine um, so let's call it demo app and it's empty and I'm gonna buy Rio ng full stack run that and it says what is the name of your application you want to be careful here do not use a name that has spaces in it because things are gonna break in a very serious way you would not be warned about it and it just wouldn't work so I'm gonna call my demo app that's what I'm gonna call it I'm not gonna use any space it says what's your name uh, username on github type free to type anything you like um, even if you don't have a name on github and here it's giving me a choice of whether I want to generate just the client front end alone the back end or the full stack so I'm gonna go with full stack here what do you want on the, to use on the server side so instead of using go or um, a node or go these are the two languages um, technology you could use in the back end we of course are going to stick with node and express um, for our front end we haven't been doing um, angular 2 so we're going to use angular 1 and we're not going to use any of the other languages that transpile or compile down to javascript so we just use node and then do you want a secure app yes that security is a good thing and do you want to use a different static web server so if you remember what we did a while back when we kind of tied up our front end or our back end is we use um, Python to run our front end and then we were running node of course to create the back end server and I said that oh use running it in that style give you some flexibility when you can separate your front end from your back end you can scale them independently you could put them in different servers all kinds of, sort of things so here we're gonna just say no we don't want to split them up but if we wanted to we could say yes and then the static part is considered the part that doesn't change static means it doesn't change stay the same that would be your HTML images and that sort of thing which is really what's in your angular application nothing in the angular application really changes angular send data to the back end get data from the back end but none of those files ever change right so that's static stuff so you could have that served up with you know nginx or Apache or whatever um, so we'll say no for no and just have um, express our backend application also create a route for our static stuff and so this is run it's got creating some file install some stuff we could see here that I created a bunch of files look familiar Bower we know um, that it's going to be used by um, 
you know, Bower, that JSON salary is going to be used by Bower for manage our front end dependencies. Packet that JSON is going to be used by NPM to manage our back end dependency. This is just a readme file. This gulp file for Babel, we don't care about a protractor, it's like test files and karma, uh, like test file. We don't have to worry about all this stuff. Bower RC is just configuration information for Bower. And of course, git ignore file. Um, hint, JS hints, um, this Linton rules for what, what's correct in our JavaScript or what's bad, what we shouldn't do, best practices. Uh, we don't keep a Babel RC. Okay. Um, so this looks like it's finished. So let me just kind of scroll along here to the bottom. And so good, great. It looks like it's using it Angular 1.5.9. So this is one of the more recent Angulars. We've been using like 1.1 or 1.2. So there's definitely some new features in 1.5 we haven't seen, but for the most part, it didn't look exactly like what we've been doing. And so one of the things I can do is just start up my editor here. And so I'm gonna do just that. And so, yeah, there's our application and all the thing. It looked like it created a directory for client and a directory for the server. Um, the task, those are the things that are gonna be run by, you know, um, Gulp or whatever, and we don't care. Of course, a test directory. And for now, we're gonna ignore test. And of course, our node modules directory for our backend stuff and our front end mode modules, um, you know, JavaScript libraries, those are there inside client. So the only two things we're gonna really care about um, are gonna be in really in the client directory and server directory. And we pretty much don't have to worry about anything else. All right, so let's do npm run dev. And um, that's what it says to do. And so let's do that. And it looks like um, the thing that it's gonna run when we do run dev, it's gonna do concurrently npm start and gulp, which they're telling you you could do independently. So if you did gulp run watch, um, you'll see that how it starts gulp and npm start started starts node with running the index.js file. So it just says index there, but it means index.js. So it's really gonna start running this file, which is, here we can see it just says require server server. And so that means from the server directory, require server.js and run that. I'm not gonna go look at the server, but basically you can imagine that's gonna start up a express application and just run it. So let's just do that. Let's just get this thing running. So npm run dev. And remember, we already had um, this run in the back end and look, it connected, it got a new connection. Um, so it's got two connections now, now open. This is one of them and one from our application. And this is the to-do application that it started up for us. And so um, it's telling us that um, this to-do field is required. So let's start typing. It says it's too small, so minimum of five characters. So that's okay. Um, buy milk is one of the things maybe I have to do. And click add. And there you go, um, been added to the list. Now, let's see, is this being stored to our backend? So let's look at the databases again. And now you could see there's another database here called Demo Apps, which is the name that we give to our application. And so we can say use Demo App Database. And now we can say database that get collections names. And we can see which collections are there. Oh. Oh, sorry. So database that uh, demo. Uh, let's see. Um, there's a collection we want. Uh, so we have a collection. We should have a collection called um, Dan. Hmm. Am I connected to? Okay, let me do this again. So database that get collection names okay I'm getting so okay use demo app switch to demo app okay David get collection name. oh I typed something wrong the first time that was confusing so we could see it there's a collection called to do's so I can say database that to do's that find and it should find everything that's in there and we could see the ID there's an ID and there's a field called to do message and it says buy milk and it was created. So there are just basically three fields in this, which we know this field is gonna be added by Mongo, but you know, two fields. And then there's a date when it was inserted. So that's great. Now uh, let's add something else. Uh, 
and so I press enter there and now it added it and so of course if I search my MongoDB I should see you know I have to um, records and of course I can delete and so there we go it's delete from our front end and there's one and that's the one by milk is left okay now if you remember um, let's go back here to so we know it's always connected so here it's telling us you can access the application by these different URLs you can use the local local 3000 which is being used here um, or the IP address of my computer uh, 3000 and that what that means is that I can access it from another computer on my network or like a mobile device if I have that connected to my Wi-Fi. So that's a nice thing to do, like I mentioned before, because it allows you to do some simultaneous testing. And here is the browser sync port, and we looked at browser sync before. And so uh, let me just go show you, remind you what that looked like. So I'm gonna paste that. And there's browser sync, and you can see that it can show you who's connected, with the external URL, it's proxy in, and all this information, right? We don't really care about that. That's just for nice debugging and stuff. What I'd like to show you is being able to do like SA Safari. And if I run Safari here, and Safari is not allowing me to resize any smaller than this, but if I were to HTTPS, notice my stuff is running on HTTPS um, because I say I want security and I do paste and enter. Mm, come on. Why oh, is not loading? This. Okay, there we go. So far as it doesn't recognize the certificate, you know, I can say show or whatever. I'm going to do continue. And now you can see I, um, I have another connection. And you can see by milk. Now, what's what's going to happen when I say video? And I enter to add that. And notice how it's updated also over here. Um, not only that, but as I type here, it's also typing on that screen. So this is good because it allowed me to do testing on multiple browsers. I can do Firefox also. And so I'll bring up my Firefox here and allow me to resize things a little bit narrower than Safari. And I'm gonna paste and go. And uh, let's open it because it seems to be complaining. Um, <laughs> Advance, add exception, uh, conform exception, and I'm gonna wanna reset this to its default size, and then I can narrate. And notice how my things are nicely resizing because it's using Bootstrap. So that's nice. So now I can see also how this look. And add that. And to notice all it updates on all screen and there we go and there we go so this is really nice as a um, piece of code that um, we were able to generate here just by typing one command so the next thing we need to see is what are all the generators that we have available to us so <coughs> excuse me so you scroll up here and we click on sub generators you click here you can see it all um, because this supports angular 2 and you can do typescript that's why some of these um, like component sub generator is not going to matter for us because that there's no component in um, angular 1 controller we can imagine a controller and this feature directory i can show you what feature means but um, later we we'll look at that and of course decorators and directors and services filters factory decorator module um, and then on the server side, we can create an endpoint, which would create a whole lot of stuff for us. We're not gonna look at that just yet. So at least I wanted to get us to this point. Um, hopefully um, you're able to see this run and get this run in. And if you like, you can go and kind of poke around um, in this directory to see what's being uh, given to you. But I'm gonna cover that in the very next video. Um, and we're gonna poke around here and see how we can modify this application or how we can add to it, all right? So that's all for now for this video. Um, hopefully you get this much running. If you have problem trying to run it when you point your browser, sorry, when you do security, 
and you use Chrome or something, you might have to accept the exceptions because it's using a self-signed certificate and your browser is going to complain about that. So that's just FYI. All right. Take care. Thanks. And see you in the very next video soon.